In this tutorial, we'll cover NURB surfaces. What does NURB stand for? Well, NURBs means cool organic shapes that are really easy to create and edit. Actually, it's an acronym for Non-Uniform Rational B-Spline, which is just a fancy name for the mathematics behind how these surfaces are defined. Fortunately, we don't need to know anything about all that stuff. All we care about is the ability to have some fun making really complex shapes with ease. The NURBS tools are located in the Surfaces suite of icons located at the bottom. Let's try a NURBS loft first. We can loft across any number of profile shapes. Here we have two curves. Simply click on two curves and a smooth NURB surface is lofted between those two shapes. If we want to modify the shape, we can show controls. There's two ways of doing that. One is we can pick the object with the pick tool and in the tool options we can click on the show controls button or hide the controls of that NURBS object. A second method is to right click on the object and choose show controls. There's more information at the end of this tutorial describing other ways that we can modify the shape using these controls to transform and reshape your NURBS object. Now let's loft across more than two shapes. For example, select the polygon drawing tool and select the 2D insert icon and turn the insert option off. Draw a 2D polygon for one source shape and we'll draw two more then we need to move those perpendicular. So select the Move tool, click on the object, and as you drag it, hold the Command key on Mac or the Control key on Window to toggle the perpendicular direction. And there's our three sources that we'll use for the lofting operation. So let's select the NURBS Loft tool, and in the Tool Options, we'll leave it at the default, which is by Loose Lofting. Hold down the Shift key, and you can click on multiple source shapes. When you're all done, release the Shift key and click a blank area and a smooth NURB surface is lofted through the shapes. And this creates a surface using the control points of the selected curves. Undo the operation and let's try by tight lofting. Hold down the shift key, click your sources, release the shift key, click a blank area, and now we have a nice lofted surface through those controls, but the tight loft creates a surface that passes through the actual selected curves, not just the control points of the curves. Let's examine a few helpful hints when lofting. The first one is to pick curves in a proper order. The lofting process will take place in the order that you pick your source shapes. The second hint is uh, make sure all the curves are the same type. They're all open or all closed. For example, if we delete a single segment on one of the polygons, it becomes an open shape. If you try to loft across these two closed shapes and the one open shape, you will get an error message. One other helpful hint is that all curves should be going the same direction and the start points should be aligned in the same area. In order to see this information, we go into the Display Options, click the Interactive tab, and we can show first point and show direction on your source shapes. We can see that there's an arrow on the segments, which indicate the direction of the shape, and there's a white diamond representing the start location of the shape. In most cases, you never have to be concerned about these options, because in the Tool Options palette for the lofting tool, there is an automatically correct sources option, which is by default turned on. So in most cases, you won't have to worry about this. But if you do need to modify those, then you can see in the Manage suite of icons, there's a First Point tool. Just simply click on any point, and it becomes the first point or the start point of that shape. There's also a Reverse Direction tool. Click on any object, and it will reverse the direction of that object so we can go from clockwise to counterclockwise. It doesn't matter whether they're all clockwise or counterclockwise as long as they're all going the same direction and that the start points are sort of in the same area to avoid any type of twisting that might occur during the lofting process. Next, we'll look at the NURBS by Boundary tool. This tool creates a surface bounded by two, three, or four curves that form a closed boundary. Select the tool and start picking curves. When two curves are selected and these two curves form a closed boundary within a reasonable tolerance, a surface is created. Otherwise, the tool waits for a third curve to be selected. When three curves are selected and these curves form a closed boundary within a tolerance, a surface is created. Otherwise, the tool waits for a fourth curve. When four curves are selected, the tool uses a relaxing tolerance to attempt to create a surface. If the curves do not form a boundary within an appropriate tolerance, then no surface is created and a message is posted that curves do not form a boundary. Now let's look at the NURBS by UV Curves tool. This tool generates NURBS services from curves that form a grid that can be interpreted as U and V curves. Think of the U curves as all the curves going in one direction, and the V curves as the curves going in the other direction. There is no practical limit to the number of curves you can have in either direction. 
With the tool selected, hold down the Shift key and click all of the curves. The sources can be selected in any order. Release the Shift button, click a blank area, and a smooth surface is interpolated through all the sets of lines. The next tool is the Convert NURBS tool. This tool takes any object and converts it into a NURBS surface. For example, let's take a spline curve and extrude that. And observe that if we show the controls, it gives us the original spline controls and the extrusion height as expected. Let's use the NURBS Convert tool on this, and it becomes a NURBS surface. Right click and turn Show Controls on. And you can see this gives us a lot more flexibility with being able to edit and sculpt that shape as a NURBS object instead of an extruded object. Let's try another example. What if we have an object that has multiple surfaces? Let's try a cylinder. We'll take a circle and extrude that into a cylindrical shape. If we click on it with the NURBS Convert tool, it actually breaks the object into three different NURBS surfaces. So the top face and the middle cylindrical surface and the bottom face are all separate NURBS objects. If we were to turn the show controls on, you can see that each of the objects has its own set of NURBS control handles. The next tool in the suite of icons is the NURBS by Cross-Section tool. This tool creates a set of cross-section curves from a set of profile curves. These derived cross-sections can then be used to loft a surface. For example, let's make a fancy leg for a chair. We begin by drawing a series of profiles which represent the shape that we want. We also use the multi-view option to get a top, front, and side view to be able to create these 3D curves. We'll also need a vector line which represents the orientation of the cross-sections that we're going to create. So when drawing the vector line tool, we hit the Command key on Mac or Control key on Windows to pull that vector line perpendicular to the reference plane. And now we're ready. So let's select the NURBS by cross-section tool. And in the tool options, we'll select the Create Cross-Sections option and we'll give it the number of curves that we want. Hold down the Shift key and click all your profile curves in the proper order. When you're done, release the Shift key and click a blank area. The last thing to click on is the vector line which represents the orientation for the cross sections. If we want to modify those parameters, we can just type any value that we want for the number of curves and hit the return key or, or click a blank area, and we can automatically update the number of cross sections. We can also create a surface. Simply click on that option, and now a smooth NURB surface is generated through those cross sections. We no longer need the vertical vector line that we used for the orientation, so we'll simply go and find the Delete tool and get rid of that vector line. The last tool is the NURBS Reconstruct tool. We'll create a NURBS surface by extruding a spline curve, and then we'll take that curve and we'll convert that into a NURBS object. Use the NURBS Convert tool and click on it, it becomes a NURBS surface. Right click and show controls and we can see we have a predefined set of controls on there. If we want to modify that, we can click on the NURBS Reconstruct tool, click on the NURBS surface, and all the parameters are displayed in the tool options. For example, the number of controls. Instead of 3 along the length, let's change that to 5. And for the depth, let's change that to 5. Now we have a grid of 5 by 5 controls on that NURBS surface. We can also change the degree, which is the amount of smoothing that's applied through each of the control point positions. Let's set the depth and the length to be degree 1, which means there's no smoothing that's applied through any of those control point positions. And so you can see the surface goes directly through each of those control lines. Let's use the NURBS Reconstruct tool again, and let's change the degree of smoothing to be 2. The higher we set that degree, the more smoothing we get through those control point positions. We'll conclude this tutorial with some helpful hints on moving controls on NURBS objects. We can use any of the transformation tools on these controls. For example, if you select the Move tool, you can just click on any control and move it wherever you want. If you want to move multiple controls, well, simply hold down the Shift key, and you can pick multiple controls, release the Shift key, and click and drag to move the controls simultaneously. Press and release the Command Can Mac or Control Can Windows to move in the perpendicular direction. You can even pick entire control lines, just click on a line instead of the control point position, and you can move that entire U or V line. If you want to move multiple control lines, just simply hold down the Shift key, click on multiple lines, and then just simply click and drag, and you can move those at the same time also. We can use any of these tools. For example, let's uh, maybe go to the Rotate tool, 
click on any number of controls that we want, for example, maybe just a line on the side here. The first click will be the base point for the rotation, the second click will start the rotation, and then the third click will stop the rotation. How about scaling? One more just for fun here, just simply grab those controls, click a point for the base of the scale, click a point to start scaling all the points towards or away from that base point, and click a fourth time to end that operation. This demonstrates the intuitive power of take a simple shape and easily sculpt it into a more complex form, giving you the freedom to really play with the geometry. And this concludes the Nerbs Surfaces tutorial.